Hi there, my name is Kendrick and welcome to another ENA female interview. Today I get to interview Darren. So Darren, welcome, man. Hi, Kendrick. So Darren, can you tell us your full type, please? So I'm ENTP, uh, play, consume, blast, sleep, double feminine. Awesome. And then when you got your typing results back, uh, what did you think and how did you feel? I was shocked, <laughs> um, you know, because I think back in the early 90s, I uh, read Curiosity's book, you know, Please Understand Me, and um, I was ENFP from that. And it, the description seemed to fit perfectly. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. You know, oh, I knew it. I knew it, you know. And um, so for the last, what, it's been 30 years almost. <laughs> 30 years I thought I was an ENFP, and then suddenly I'm like, I'm not an ENFP anymore. You know, they took away my ENFP ness. <laughs> no, no, so yeah it's been a it's been a learning experience but it was good it's good well it makes sense because uh you are a feeler but you're an ENTP so it, it doesn't quite fit in the old Myers-Briggs system so right. so but that, I think the feeling above the thinking like you know that I would use it first so I'm like okay well that must be FI yeah because I know I'm an E. I could not be anything but an E from, from what I could see. So, right. And you're also NF, right? Because of uh, N E F E. So it's right. confusing. And that old Kearsay book, you know, th that's kind of how they label people. It's like NF, N T S, J, N S P, right? So, <laughs> right. And the internet was not really a big thing back then. Yeah. And, um, you know, there was no, nowhere, else, you know, there was nothing else. So when I would, you know, look around, I'm like, um, other NFP, because I, I tried to compare myself to INFP. I thought, well, maybe I might be a little bit INFP. But then I, I knew some people who I felt like were INFP, and I'm like, I am not. That's not me. I can see I'm not doing what they're doing. Well, in, in, in that Kersey book, they have like, um, you know, like they have like confidence, self esteem, blah, blah. And then they have like a like word, what, like one word to like describe what it is like for like, like for certain categories like NFs, NTs, and whatnot. So, um, for ENT, for the NT, for the ENTP and the ENFP, they're in different categories, right? So, yeah. When you read that book like long time ago, I don't know, it's like been forever, I guess. But like, did did you resonate with like what self esteem is like for the NF or for the NT, or like when you look at the? For 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 a little bit, actually, to be honest with you, I mean, in retrospect, for both, um, but more for, so for the NF. Um, yeah, I felt like being authentic was more important to me. Than yeah. just being correct, or you know, I mean, and I think that the way they painted it in that book kind of made the NT seem a little bit more uh, science, robotic, and a little bit more technical, and you know, yeah. And so, it, what was that thing? <laughs> the warmest robots or the, the coldest humans? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, well, it's... I think they use the word utilitarian too, like for describing right. like right like how they make decisions. It's like you know. So like willing to sacrifice other people for the greater good, you know, but then you're still sacrificing. Yeah, and, and you can kind of see that a little bit, you know, it's like, well, even when ST, you know, I mean, TE, excuse me, with TE, you, you kind of have to make the call, you know, and it's got to be a logical one. It's got to make sense. Yeah. And so, you know, I could see that. I'm like, yeah, I have to make the call sometimes and it has to make sense. So that's, you know, I felt like that was the logic coming in. Right, right. <laughs> So I guess I guess you're you have your foot in both both worlds. So it's it's a little bit like confusing. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I'm the same as you. So it's 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 fine. Like I, I'm a I'm an NTE NFP. So I'm NETE. So I'm right, also right. I'm also like the the weird version. So it's like yeah, I also have my foot in both doors, and I'm like ah, like I'm, you know. So we did the best we could. I mean, there was you know no jumpers or anything back then. Uh, this is all new. So yeah, right. <laughs> But I, I feel weird because I, you know, typed other people and talked about it and read billions of articles, even wrote articles for Socionics and stuff like that, you know, thinking I'm an ENFP and uh, went deep into the Enneagram and everything, you know, so. <laughs> well, I think the Enneagram is its own. It's its own thing. thing. Yeah, its own thing, yeah. So. But I was using it to try to see, figure out, okay, well, what's the correlation between, if you're looking at humans, we're looking at the same thing. Why is this ISTJ so different from this ISTJ? Why is this, you know? And I thought, well, maybe this is the key. And then, of course, you know. <laughs> right. But that's what any does, I think, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, no, it makes sense. I, that's what I did also. I did exactly what you did. Like, I'm like, okay, well, the only reason to differentiate the different types is the Enneagram, you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Then, yeah. So, um, 
All right, cool. So let's talk about your function stack. Uh, let's start with your NE. That's your that's that's the like the the king here. Uh, masculine NE. You have masculine NE. Um, how do you personally? So so this one has not changed. Regardless if you are ENFP or ENTP, you still have the NE, and you've always seen it. Uh, you have masculine NE. Uh, how do you personally experience that? Oh, right. Horrible. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse, you know, because you can't turn it off. Uh, so it's always on, uh, constantly gathering in information, almost aggressively gathering in information. Like I, what I just said about, you know, okay, if this is true, then, you know, let's go find out all the other stuff to see if it fits in with this pattern that I'm seeing, you know. And so you're just constantly pulling things in, you know, like the NA will gather the NI concepts. So the NI person is over there working on their concept and you're like, what's that? You know, and then you jump in and you go and do a deep dive, right? You figure out all the lingo because they have all these acronyms and ideas around it. And you scoop it all up and you throw it in your bag. Thank you. And you take off, boom. And you, you know, and then you later on, you're smashing it together with other NI to make it work. <laughs> Pieces are falling on the ground and you don't care, you know, because <laughs> it's part of your, <laughs> your NI concept. You know, it's like, I want to figure out this, what the big picture is, not the, what the small pieces are. Yeah. So they all have to fit together, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> I yeah. like the way you describe it is, is uh, I'm, like, I'm, I do exactly what you just said. I'm guilty of, guilty of that. So, so it's so disrespectful of the NI, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, poor NIs. Like it's, like they work so hard to organize it and then like this jerk, and he person comes in and just like swipes it and like disrespects it and like, well, what if I combine it with this other one? <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I, I appreciate that what the NIs are doing. I mean, I really respect it because they really do a lot of work, you know. And they, it's like a shortcut for me, but you know, I'm like, well, I, you know, you stand back and look at the whole spectrum. You're like, well, how does this fit in with this whole spectrum? And some people, their ideas don't fit. It's like this doesn't make any sense. So you just grant you scoop off what you like. I like these pieces and then you put that in your bag and you push the rest of the way, you know, and, yeah. and you go on to the next thing and see if it fits. Well, I mean, the way to describe it though is like the extroverted um, function beats the introverted function. And uh, so when the person's NI can be easily broken by the NE, clearly it's not NI enough. It's not organized well enough that it's it's solid like with ops you cannot squeeze anything to it it's it's almost like a perfected system so and then um dave dave said that a lot of ne people get upset at that the fact that they can't like mess it up it's like it's it's perfected it's been like foolproof right so yeah. you know once in a while you come across like an ni concept that is like i think the anagram is the same thing it's also it's it's kind of foolproof too right it's like it's it's it's, it's like a standalone system like you can't you know it can work together with other systems yeah. Kind of like stand alone you know like well and it also has its subjective quality to it so sure. that like how can i if it's subjective then you cannot you know um make it adhere to rigorous logic or anything like that and so you can just kind of respect it for, for what it is you know? right and everything doesn't have to be broken down into little pieces and stuff but i think what uh you look for is like do i identify with this does this make sense to me from my own experience and you know if it doesn't, then it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think a system would exist if it wasn't relevant to people, like if it wasn't right. useful. So yeah. yeah. Um, also, you have mask and NE. So does that mean that you, when, when you have um, like an idea for a concept or patterns that you have a very good memory for it, like you don't forget it? Yeah, I don't forget it. Mm -hmm. OK. So that's where we're different with my feminine any. I forget it. I'll, like I'll take a shower. I have a great idea. By the time I'm out, I forgot it already. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm I'm so annoyed. So I wish I could forget it. Sometimes it'll stick in my head, and I'll obsess over it. And yeah. you know, I'll carry it with me for years and years and years. Some things I started learning many many years ago, even when I was a little kid, I'll still carry it with me today. Um, if you, a person gets inside my head, like their personality or something about them, and it's stuck in my memory then that pattern will stay with me and I just keep adding on to it. So it becomes a, it becomes a burden after a while. It's like, okay, I'm carrying a massive amount of information in my head. This, this <laughs> giant unwielding you know, thing. Um, what, what would you say is like the, the pros and cons of, of that, like being able to hold onto it for so long for yourself? Um, it almost becomes kind of like an in-at-eye thing, but... Um, 
you, it's hard to turn, you can't turn it off. It's hard to turn off, you know, so that's the hard thing. So you, if you can't sleep, you know, you, I mean, I think you have to start pulling in your other things, your SI and stuff like that to help you to calm your brain down so that you can actually focus and, and not be, you know, not constantly be bombarded with ideas and thoughts and patterns and memory. So your ideas keep you awake at night, the masculine any, it keeps you oh, awake? Oh, yeah. It will not stop. It will not stop. I don't wish it on anybody. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> this, this, no. This is good information because like, um, for me, I have masculine FI, so it's my feelings that keep me awake at night, not my, not my patterns and concepts because I'm sleep last like you, uh, but, but my any is feminine. So it's like, I already forgot, so I'm not dwelling on it. But I, I'm dwelling on my feelings because it's masculine. So it's so I'm like so when you said that, I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So for sleep last people, the, their their masculine function is what keeps them awake at night. <laughs> you know, if they're sleep last, if they're sleep last. So I'm like, yeah, oh. yeah, it won't, it won't, it doesn't cut, shut off. And then you know, if you combine it with your other functions, of course, right. So you're okay, gonna, you know, feel that. Um, let's let's talk about that then. Um, you have double masculine, anti-consume. Uh, can you talk about that? And that's also a savior for you. Um, so can you talk about your experience with, with that? And like- I'm <laughs> curious, because it's like, it's kind of a savior and kind of not. It's kind of like a demon savior because, yeah, I mean, it will, it'll, so you, you gather in all this stuff. Now it wants to puzzle it and figure it out. You know, okay, this way, that way. And just for your own amusement, really. It's like, I mean, later on, you realize that this can be used for other people. But first you have to figure it out in your head. So you're flipping things back and forth, round and round, trying to look at it from every single angle. Why did this happen? You know, should this be this way? Well, does that do that? Does this do that? And yeah. And then you feel this tension in your back and your neck and your shoulders and stuff like that because <laughs> your brain is kind of overworking. So it, um, it becomes a lot. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you're doing it in the right order for your specific type. Like you're consuming first before you do it for, before you blast it to other people, you know? So oh, yeah, yeah. Cause I'm opposite, I'm blast before consume. So like I have to blast something first before I can consume something. <laughs> and I wrote down some things. Let me see what I did right, right down yeah, here. Go for it. Um, yeah, so the TI puts a lot of pressure on yourself to get it right. Um, and it can, yeah, it, it can kind of, The any actually saves the TI from going too too dark because the TI can go super dark and and you know if this is means this and this means this, you start stacking your logic or your reasons on top of each other. It can lead you into a dark corner where you can't work yourself out of it. So the any starts giving you more info, more options to kind of break out of it. Well, it's always this. There's always that in case this doesn't work or that's not true, you know. Can, can you can you talk about like the dark hole that the TI stacking gets you? Because uh, I'm curious about that. I don't know what that what that's like. I don't have TI, but uh, in your own words, how do you describe that like dark? I think it's, it works in the same way FI does. You know, um, in in similar ways. Like not in the same way, but in a similar way, where you know a person if they have FI probably can go into a dark corner. You know, everybody hates me, or this doesn't. You know, or I feel like a failure because of whatever that kind of thing and it's taking emotional probably emotional reasons and using them and I think TI can probably do the same thing I'm kind of coming trying to come to grips with TI because I thought I had FI all this time yeah yeah there we go so what I'm thinking of is like it always somehow leads you to leads you into somehow being homeless and <laughs> nowhere to go <laughs> or something like that or dead in some kind of you know ditch or something um i think it, yeah just just take you know or, or like it gets dark because like if you're thinking okay i'm trying to think of a good way to explain it in a practical way it would be like saying okay if you do this, then this will happen. And if that happens, then that means logically, then that means that this has to happen. And if that happens, then that means that these things could happen, which will lead you to, you know, and it could go dark. It just goes dark. I don't, I, I'm trying to hard, it's kind of hard a little bit to explain. Um, it doesn't, cause there's no feeling attached to it, right? So there's no mercy or kindness that's gonna come in. You can't, you're not like, 
factoring in the benevolence of the universe or anything like that. Right. And so it becomes clinical and kind of sour. Well, it's that's kind of still needed because it's true. It's a true, right? It's a truth. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're all, you know, because of human, we have this mortality and we have these needs, you know, and if I, I can't meet this need because of this or that, then that means that I have to go without. And now that means it's going to get really dark and bleak, you know, if I keep going down this path in this particular way, you know, but somehow it actually comes back around to help me out. And I'll explain that later. Um, I think the way I create a scenario in my head based on what you explained is kind of like this, like, for example, there's like a, uh, for example, there's like a war and um, your, your kids are like dying and they need medicine. So you go to like a, um, a pharmacy and then the, the pharmacist said, you can't take this stuff. You have to pay for it, but then you have no money because there's a war. So you take a shotgun and you shoot the pharmacist because, because, you know, because, because that's the only way you can get those medicine. And, and it's cold and it's dark, but uh, your kids need the medicine. So you're like, you know what? This is everyone for themselves. It's a war. You know, there's no relief coming anywhere. You know, it's either him or my kids. So, and then you take the medicine, you go home and yeah, it, it's horrible, but it's, but it, the truth is someone has, one person has to go for, for someone to live. So is that kind of like how dark TI can, can go? Like that's how it, so it kind of like a, a little bit darker than I would go. I wouldn't think it would kill somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just like thinking like sorry, I have to have the medicine. Bam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think I would do that. But um it's something along those lines where it's like yeah. if I don't get this, this could happen, and then these things could result. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, I would a little bit darker than me. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been playing some like dark video games lately. Like yeah, I, right. yeah, I play a game called This War is Mine and Frostpunk and they're both like really dark. You have to make like dark decisions for the survival of your your group. And I was like, so I was thinking, I'm like, I wonder if that's like TI where you have to like kind of be cold, you know, and yeah, well, it, it's yeah, go ahead. It's one of those reasons why actually I don't I don't play video games like that. And I don't I don't even watch the news or I don't I try to stay away from from movies or things that are, you know, with extreme violence, extreme things like that, because yeah. it'll actually just fuel this really dark outlook on life. And it's like, that, none of most of those things are never gonna happen. Um, I mean, by and large, a lot of things that you think are the worst thing ever that can happen, it's not gonna really happen. It's never, you know, if I look back in the past, did all the things I catastrophize over worry about, did they really come true? And the answer is no, they didn't. And I stressed myself out for nothing in all those years. So, so I'm like, yeah, stop doing that, you know, stop. Yeah. Stop feeding your brain a lot of negative stuff that uh, in the end, you know, it's not going to make, it's not going to make life better, not going to improve your life for yourself or anybody else. Um, and the outcome is not, and it's going to stop you from actually coming up with better solutions. So I just, I don't fuel it. Well, I'm going to be info dominant a little bit here. So just bear with me, <laughs> but um, the game I'm playing is based on an actual real life uh, events. Um, so Remember the Yugoslavia when um, they broke off and um, Bosnia got um, th there was a siege and then they got surrounded. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So and people had to uh, commit atrocities to kind of survive. Um, so um, I think the game was trying to depict that, but you are the player inside that like that world of like you know you're you're blockaded by the military. There's no food. Criminal act is the only way for you to get some food to eat for your family, and it is very dark. But I think you can learn something from it where like, yeah, you don't get to the point where it becomes like that, you know, <laughs> like, uh, you know, so. Yeah, I think when my, my feelings start getting involved in it, then it's like, I'm traumatizing myself <laughs> for, for, for fun, you know, yeah. uh, I'm creating trauma that I'm going to have to heal that hasn't even happened to me. Uh, that's kind of how I view it. I'm like, um, do I really want that? <laughs> like, I think life is hard enough as it is. <laughs> so, because, you know, I, I mean, perhaps there could be a, something horrible to happen. Um, right. It probably is not going to be that scenario. It's probably going to be something else. So now I have to deal with that new trauma that's really happening. And now I'm carrying the burden of all these other past traumas that I thought might happen because I played these games or I viewed these movies or I did all this other stuff. None of that happened. This now it's something completely out of the blue. And I and I, now I'm faced with something new. So I was like, well, why am I why added grief bring added grief to my life? 
So I don't know. I just that's just something I came up with of like how I'm gonna view my life. I'm gonna think something positive instead. Um, you have feminine FE, so it's not the same as masculine FEs. Um, so emotions don't they don't get stuck for you um, because it's feminine. Like okay, let's say like um, I mean, tell me how you experience this. But like um, from the other people I've interviewed with feminine FE, they said that you know, they'll be with someone and like the person they're talking to, let's say they're crying. So they'll cry with them because it's feminine Effie. Um, it's not their emotions. It's the other person's emotions, of course. But then when they go home, the fe- that feeling is gone. Like they're not, they don't feel that feeling anymore by the time they leave. Do you resonate with that? Or do you still carry that emotion with you, um, you know, throughout the day or even the next day? No, I probably don't carry it with me. Um, I will keep the person in mind. I might think about them you know, um, I'm kind of like tracking other people and what's going on with them, right. I, even without me even knowing I was doing that. I didn't know I was doing this, but I was just right. tracking when I'm around people, I'm tracking their emotions and, and the pattern of who they are and what's going on with them. And then when I'm not with them, I'm resonating with somebody else. So that kind of leaves. And when I'm back with them again, it comes back. Oh yeah, that's right. You know, and, um, and then I pick up the pattern again. So, you know, I cannot see a person for a long, long period of time. And then I meet with them again and the rhythm of who they are comes back to me. And it's like, oh yeah, you know? And so I just kind of relate to them at that point. But it kind of helps you move through situations without getting stuck. Um, Occasionally though, you do get into it. Like if you do have a conflict with somebody then your brain has to figure out how to resolve that. And then it starts calling forth other, other parts of you like what happened and all that stuff, you know? That's when the, the thought process goes into. I, I feel like you were kind of describing NF play in a way, because like, um, like NF is like purpose, it's meaning, it's also like character, uh, a person's uh, character. But for you, it's, it's very interesting how you describe it because yours is in a, in a play state, you know, um, in your animal stack. So it seems like when you are with that person, this is, it's like the, the word you use is rhythm. There's like a specific rhythm that, that, that happens when you are with certain people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you can feel that rhythm uh, mm-hmm. when you're with that person. When you're not with that person, the rhythm is gone, of course. But like, but I mean, you might still think about them, but the rhythm is not there until, unless you are there uh, with them in the present moment. Um, so can you talk about like how you kind of integrate yourself into that rhythm? Is it like automatic? Because you have it, you have play as a, as a savior or is it like something that like you 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 consciously do like the integration with that other person um it's mostly automatic uh it depends on i mean some people are like they're a little bit harder to relate to maybe they're so distant from my own function stack that i'm like i don't know who this person is or where they're coming from you know they have a blank face i just you know and then i, I just really pl- i have to do be more focused on playing it by ear like what's going on here you know and try to be more sensitive to you know I don't want to step on their toes or offend them and I don't want to come in like you know gangbusters and you know destroy their harmony <laughs> their inner harmony or whatever um and then there, there are other people that are really aggressive and they're coming at you and it's like they're almost like forcing a conflict on you you know where you got to come back at them you know and yeah, I just want to be careful with that because I can come out, oh, you want to start swinging and I come back swinging and then I realize I hit their FI, which was hidden underneath all of that. Bam. And then they're like, oh, you know, <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I hurt you. I just, I thought you can handle it, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I'm constantly like, you know, feeling my way through <laughs> like that. Well, it sounds to me that you were describing ST play because you're NF play, right? So, so the, the, the natural opposite of NF is ST. So, you know, if they're coming out swinging, they're probably swinging with the facts with the ST, like to your face. So yeah. ST means S-E-T-E, right? So they do have FI as you, as you described. So you are going to hurt their FI when you do. Sw- it, it makes sense because they're, they're trying to. I think the masculine TI is, is right there, you know, it's right there. So, you know, they may, they can come at me, you know, strong and then, they'll say something that doesn't make sense to me. And I'm like, what? That doesn't make no sense. And I, you know, so I, they'll, I'll do a combo of like, there's this play side, you know, it's like, okay, well, let's make fun of this logic, you know? And 
I'll swing at them or do whatever. And then all of a sudden they'll like respond with this like knee jerk, oh, you know, and I'm like, oh, I think I, <laughs> I kind of got too close to them. You know, I have to be careful, you know, that kind of thing. I feel like you're most likely to hurt someone with FI, like you said, not TI because uh, of your FE. And and also like I think people with ST uh, with ST play, they they have NI also. So you're gonna hurt them twice with your NE and your FE. You're gonna you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna you know disrespect their NI with your NE and you're you're gonna disrespect their FI with your FE. So it's your it's like a double whammy. So like the INTJs and those guys, you know, like they they've even said like he has he he has only he can beat all the types except for the ENTPs and ENFPs because the NEs will just ruin the ruin them, right? So um I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're yeah. Smokies, right? We don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're not, not doing it on purpose, but yeah, like, we're doing the best we can, but you know, <laughs> to make mistakes. <laughs> um, so um, I want to talk about your blast. So your blast is SF and it's double feminine. So it's going to be like the most gentle SF um, blast uh, form there is. Um, SF blast is kind of interesting because it's like um, you're trying to like, control someone's behavior or suggest to someone how they should behave. Um, even before our interview, you messaged me and you said, can we take out all the swearing and, and whatnot? So that's like you trying to control the behavior of the interview, which is let's make it like PG, you know? Uh, and and that's, that's fine, but like it, it's interesting. So it clearly you do have the SF plus, but yours is very gentle. It's like a nudge. It's not like, it does, it's not like super controlling. It's more like a nudge, you know? Um, so can you describe, um, how you personally use your double feminine SF blast to kind of like control people or not control because control is more like double masculine or like masculine effie, but like how to like nudge people to behave in a specific way, you know, in a more appropriate way. Yeah. Well, I'm, I work for the school, for the school system. So, you know, working with kids and stuff like that, you can't be too, too aggressive with them. You got to be gentle with them. And I had to learn, I had to learn a lot of lessons on that because, <laughs> you know, when you're dealing, especially with like little kids and things like that, you got to be not only, con you have to, you almost have to control them uh, because it's like trying to hurt a bunch of cats, right? And they're all over the place. But, you know, you, you got to control their behavior. You got to make them sit. You got to make them do certain things. And, and you want to do it in a way so that you still keep your rapport with them and you don't lose it. Um, and I find that adults actually are just big, big children. <laughs> so, so it's better to be kind and, and try to be suggest, you know, you, you don't want to pull out the big guns unless you absolutely have to. I, I think most people appreciate you respecting their feelings. And like with your in content, I think you do such a great job with all these interviews and everything. Uh, you're doing such a great job. And I'm like, I don't want that to be wasted um, because somebody sees it, but maybe they have some kind of uh, you know, they, maybe they think respectful language is important and we say something or do something that's going to cause them to turn off, turn away from it before they even get the, the, the meat of the, the discussion, right? So, and, you know, I have people in my religious community that might see it or something. I don't want them to turn away. You know, that's my, my tribe. I don't want them to not miss, miss the point of it because, um, you know, some words or something that are said, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm looking out for not only myself, but the group, <laughs> the tribe, everybody in concern is like, what's the best for all concerned? So what should I yeah, say? That, that's, that's not a bad thing. And uh, you, obviously the reasons makes perfect sense. It's logical. So uh, yeah, like I'm not, like I'm the double decider, right? So I'm not like, I'm like, okay, well, sure. I appreciate that. <laughs> what's that? I said, I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's double decider power. It's like, yeah, yeah, sure, that's fine, <laughs> no big deal, you know. Yeah. Um, so your SF blast um, is S I F E. So there's like a step to it. Um, now you do have feminine S I, so it's not going to be like the most um, regimented step to like, you, you know, have, and you know, Chris Voss is an I I S F J, right? I don't know if you read his book, that Never Split the Difference, or, no. but but he's like um you know a negotiator for hostages, right? And it's like a specific step for the for the SIFE blast, right? Like you know, to 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 convince the the kidnapper to let go of the hostages without them getting anything in return, you know? 
Like yeah. he'll manipulate their behavior so that yeah, that's great. <laughs> they get nothing in return, but they do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really messed up, and it does work too. Like he, it also works for negotiating. Like if he's trying to make a purchase, like he wanted to buy um a vehicle, and he manipulated a person with that SF blast to give him the car for the exact price that he wanted, and he was he did not move on the bargaining. Like he did not like say, okay, fine, I'll I'll. I'll pay a little bit more. Like, nope. He's like, no, this is how much I'm gonna pay. Take it or leave it. You know, like kind of, kind of deal. But he I manipulated the situation with an SF plus. Does he have uh, so he has net? Does it? Is it? Um, it's more assertive. What is it? What is it? What is this function stack? I mean, it's like, uh, is he uh, last? In, uh, I think I, I'm not 100 sure. I I just remember he was consumed last. He was a uh, blast sleep play consume. I think okay. like standard um, ISFJ function stack. I believe. Um, I don't remember his sexual modalities. I think it's masculine, feminine. Um, I, I think that's what it is, but uh, might have to double check. But um, and, and and the good thing about him is he did learn to consume because his um, his SF blast does require you to consume. So it's 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 really good. Like when you are someone that uses your fort function, a fort animal, it like magic magical things happen. So for him, he does use his consume as part of the negotiation tactics, um, and that's why he's so effective. Is because he used to consume and the blast together, and that's when like magic happens when you use your, I guess your Fort function as well as your savior function, like they, they're all like working together in cohesion, right? Um, but I think that's true. I mean, like when you start combining your functions, you can create a bridge to your last function to help yeah. you do it better. But um, I, I do have a question for you for the SF blast because um, <clears throat> I, I find something very interesting. Um, um, I don't know if you read that uh, Jordan Peterson's book, Twelve Rules for Life. You know, fellow ENTP. Um, I consume a lot of his content, but I haven't read his book. All right. Well, it's okay. Um, I'll just quickly like give you a, a gist of it. Um, so I think Jordan Peterson's book is the best template for ENTPs to learn how to use SF Blast um, <clears throat> because he does teach SF Blast in that book. And when I was reading it, I was like, oh my God, this is SF Blast. He, he goes SI step by step on how to uh, get someone to behave appropriately, especially kids. Kids, mm -hmm. which, which I think is actually um, directly correlated to what you do, actually. So it's perfect. So yeah, it, yeah. it's really good. Um, so when I read it, I thought it was brilliant, actually, like how he would convince a kid to behave well. And, mm -hmm. and it, it, because he's an EP, he only blasts enough to be effective, but not to make the other person reset, resentful or bitter, which I think is so good. Like, I, you know, Dave and Chan um, have said in one of their class videos that the best people for the role should be the person that knows that you just need the minimum amount for it to work. So they, he, they said that the best cop or the best enforcer would be an EP because they would know how much control is required yeah. to the point where it's enough to get the job done, but not enough to piss people off, right? Because the IJs would upset a lot of people, um, you know, because they're over controlling, but then the EP doesn't want to do it. So someone has to do it, you know? So, but the best person to gather is also the IJ because they know the, the minimum amount of gathering to, to get to do the job. Yeah, because the EP would overdo it. And, you know, right. so, so it's, it's like, that's kind of like the paradox. So um, in the book by Jordan Peterson, when he's trying to discipline his, his kid from misbehaving or even other kids, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, what, what did you do that for? <clears throat> I think you, I, I think you mentioned this in, in another, like you think, I did, I did, yeah, 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 or something like that, or a flick, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's so, um, but then the, the way someone criticized this was like, yes, you are disciplining them in the moment because anything with FE is in the moment, so it's effective in the moment, but long term wise, you do need, like, like I see introverted function as like the long term solution. Mm -hmm. Well, right. the introvert function is the short-term solution. Like TE right. is like duct tape, right? You know, it's good enough for now, but long-term wise, you do need the TI to make sure it works long-term, right? So they said that if you're trying to correct someone's behavior, then long-term wise, you do need the FI to understand their deep emotional uh, and behavioral issues mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and understand how they feel. Everyone has F, everyone has everything. Mm -hmm. um, so, but... Um, but in a moment, you do need that FE. Like, like if let's, let's say you're having a dinner party and like your kid is like 
causing chaos, then you do need to have to calm down for that moment. And then when you go home, that's when you have the talk, right? Yeah. Um, so I think what a lot of people do is they forget to have that talk later, you know, or to see where I can, okay, well, okay, since I see this pattern of behavior, you right. know, if I let it keep going, where's it gonna go? You know, it's just gonna get worse. So you do have to start putting in things, not only like controls for the behavior, the negative behavior, but then also positive um, things for, for good behavior. So like, let's suppose I have a, a student in class who just, you know, they just keep acting up. Like my, one kid, I, he just would not behave. And I was doing a little round table with some kids. And um, so then I just stopped calling on him. And I would call on the other kid and say, okay, your turn, go ahead. And they would say something. And then I would go to the next kid. And then I would get to him. And then I would go back to the first kid. And then, um, and then he was like, hey, what about me? And I'm like, well, you can just keep goofing around. So we're going to leave you. You can listen for a while. And I'll let everybody else talk. Is that okay? You know, and of course they don't want to be left out. So they're going to straighten up, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so, or either that you overpraise somebody else and then you say something kind to them, but you don't give them, you don't lay it on thick because you're like, they're doing really, they're really doing good. I really love what you're doing over here and you keep it up, you know? And they don't <laughs> want that. Nobody wants that. You know, they want to be like, I want to be the, so they'll adjust their behavior to, I mean, it's manipulation, yeah. You're being passive aggressive, yes. You yeah. have to pull out every psychological trick in the book because they're kids, you know, and they don't think, you can't reason with them like adults. They're not gonna um, respond like an adult, or hopefully an, an adult, an, a mature adult. I mean, because sometimes adults are like that too. So, yeah. Uh, so I, I have uh, some questions about what you just described. It's 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 really what you said is gold, by the way. Uh, I, I like it a lot. But um, mm -hmm. so the, my so it's a two part thing that I was thinking. So first is um, you're I, it sounds like you're using social shaming to um to 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 get someone to behave because one of the biggest fear for a lot of people is like you know looking bad in front of others. So if 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 they don't behave well, then they they cannot. Then you, you essentially you knock them a few notches in. in the I think what shaming would be uh, like you shouldn't be like this. You like this and pointing the finger at them. So it's a little bit more subtle than than shaming them. It's more of like they're not going to get the goody rewards because I'm not going to be giving you rewards for poor behavior or bad behavior. Well, I mean, no, because like your 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 blast is double feminine, so it's 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 not like a true shaming. Like it's not like a double masculine SF blast where like you know it's like shame on you you know like that's the worst i hate like when people do that like shame on you it's like so it's so like it's like for me that is like the most triggering thing it's like when someone's like shame on you you know because like I, I have two youtube channels and sometimes someone would tell me like shame on you for saying that and, well, it's uh, interesting because it's just steps so like this first step is to is to make a, uh, an agreement with with them so like before you they even started like well, what what should we do if there's good behavior and you know if the class does this or that, or if we all do this and that, what should be the behavior, what should be the reward? And you have to come up with a reward and let them tell you what the reward should be. And you can write it on the board and, and or something like that, right? So you just like, we establish what the rewards are. What should be the punishment for bad behavior? They will raise their hand and give, and give punishments as well. And then you write that down. Now you, of course, some of them are unreasonable and you're gonna get rid of them. And some of them are, are reasonable and you're like, that makes sense. Let's go with that. And then, so now they've have a buy-in. So you've already bought them in. And now when they started, you know, doing those things, you start giving them verbal praises when they're doing what's right. I remember I was working with some first graders, right? And now these are very young. So um, what I did was I said, okay, they're, they're kind of being rambunctious. I started taking, I said, I took out my, my tablet and I said, I'm going to take a picture of the kids who are doing good. I put the, I took a picture of them with the tablet and I said, look at this. This is what a good student looks like, you know? He's crisscross applesauce sitting on the on the floor or whatever. And all the other kids are like, oh, I want to do that too. You know, so then I would just take pictures of all the kids that I thought were doing good. And everybody in the class conformed. So yeah. it's, I know it's terrible, but <laughs> it's F-E, right? So I make everybody conform and uh, they all were happy. Or I'd take make a paper hat out of nowhere and I'd put it on any any student's head that I thought was doing good, and then I would take a picture of them. And then I printed some of those pictures out for the really bad kids and I put them on the wall. And then I would point to that picture and I would say, remember this? You were, I love that. You were doing so good that day. And they would immediately see it and they would go, you're right. And then they would, they would change back to <laughs> what I want them to do. 
<laughs> so I don't know. It's manipulation, but it was for their for their long range benefit. You know, this is their education, their life, and if they don't like, you know, conform to some behavioral expectations, they're just going to have a hard time. They're going to be banging their head up against that wall for their for years and years to come. So I'm not trying to. I don't know. It's not about conforming to a bunch of rigorous laws, but it's just uh, keeping things kind of, you know, you're in a, in a community and you have to respect other people and, and get along. You know, it just works better that way. That's like the perfect description of like NF and SF working together, you know, like. Yeah, I guess. So. Yeah. Um, so we have multiple threads that's open now because we both have any. So like we we kind of have like a lot of open, yeah, right? <laughs> a lot of open conversations now that we haven't like closed off. So let's close them close close off close them off and then we can move on. Okay. Uh, so the first one I um that I wanted to close off first uh before we move on. And this are, this is a good topic by the way. I just want to like wrap them up so they're not like open ended. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, the first one is um you mentioned earlier that after you talk with someone uh let's say you um you, you you get a kid to to behave properly but then that's a short-term fix right so you told them that it's important to have the talk later on like so can you talk about like what, what you do when you have the talk um like on the back end yeah because i don't think people like to be um reprimanded or or, or talk too seriously when you know in in front of other people yeah because other things come out that may embarrass them or shame them or whatever like that and i wanted to make sure like i'm on your side right so when i'm having this talk to them i'm like i'm in your corner i'm on your side here's what i what i envision for you here's what i see for you you know and especially if it's a young person maybe nobody's ever actually given them that they never told nobody's ever pulled them aside and said this is what i see about you in particular that i really appreciate and enjoy and love and where i see you going in your life you know, and you say that to them and it's like, and what I want to, and what I would see, and it's not, but it's always, and to the and I think if you just do this, then you can get there. I know you can, you know, and you infuse that belief into them. You almost put a spell on them. Like, <laughs> so, you know, enough of that. And they, their behavior starts changing. Um, one girl, she was goofing off in class and and I was there, you know, sitting at their table because I was supporting the teacher. And I said, you can get straight A's. I don't know why you're goofing off like this. I'm like, you're smart. I'm like, you don't even have any competition. Look around you. Look at these kids. Stupid. <laughs> Smarter than me. I'm saying this to her in private, you know. Yeah. I'm like, you can totally get straight A's. You, you, you could do this. And she's like, huh. And then um, I give them this little test where I give them these shapes. And I'd say, pick your favorite shape. And then they pick the shape. And then the shape has a, has a meaning to it. So, <laughs> okay. so like maybe they pick a circle and the circle means that you are a feeler. Like, I'm like, oh, that means people. So the circle means people and you pick the circle. So that means that it's your job now to make sure that your people get on board to da 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 da, -da you know? So I told this girl, I'm like, you pick the arrow and the arrow is leadership. So you have to lead your group at your table here to success, and I'm going to come. In, I'm going to expect that of you because that's what I know you can do. So she did. Um, she graduated. When, this is junior high. So when she got when she was leaving junior high, she had got straight A's. She went up to got straight A's. They made her like the class speaker, or whatever. She got to in front of the class. She had to give this little speech. She came and gave me a big hug. You know, I was like, I felt totally validated. I was like, wow, you know. I don't know, it just feel, it feels awesome to do say or do something that has a profound effect on somebody else's life. Now, where she went after that, I don't know. You know, what, what happens when she goes beyond this, but I think for her, it was a turning, turning point, you know? And, that, and I, there was a lot of little stories like that that made me feel good about, about being in that profession and doing that, you know, help working with people like that. That's an amazing story, I love it. Um... When, when you said that to her initially, <clears throat> um, did you believe what you said? Absolutely. Yeah, oh. I always believe. I won't tell them anything that I don't believe is true for them or anybody, really. I, I try to be as honest as I can, but there is a little bit of a, I mean, the spin on it is I'm projecting, it, you know, react, something that hasn't happened yet. That is a potential. 
And, it's, and, and somebody did that for me when I was young and it made a big difference to me. And so I'm, that's why I do it to other people. Because if they hadn't said that, I would not have made these decisions that would affect my life. Right. I, <clears throat> I had a teacher before that was like that. I, I, I've only had one teacher like that. It was when I was in grade six. So when you're telling me the story, I was like, yeah. <clears throat> Once in a while, like a teacher like that would come across, uh, come along and it's, it's like the best thing ever. You know, when you, when you have a teacher like that, like they, they believe in you. I, yeah. I never got good grades, but I got good grades in that guy's class. So, you know, because he, he, for me, I, I felt like he refused to see, he refused his student, he refused to accept that his students had limitations. And he wanted to make sure that the, the students felt like they can do more than what their self-limiting belief that right. they impose on themselves. Right. So for me, I was like, this teacher is the best. Actually, I interviewed someone that looks exactly like him. <clears throat> so like when I interviewed him, I'm like, oh my God, you're my grade six teacher. <laughs> like, yeah. <clears throat> He's like, Kendrick? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I, I, I interviewed someone that is your type twin. Um, you, I think you said you reached out to him, Mike Silverstein. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know if you talked to him or not, but um, I haven't. No. So I, I have a friend in real in 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 here in, in Vancouver that like looks exactly like him. So I think they're the same type or similar type, um, and they kind of sound the same and look and sound everything's the same, right? Oh, really? um, and he's also a teacher. So and, and the way the, the way you're describing, I think he's double masculine though, because yeah, like yeah. When, when he shames people, he's exactly like shame on you. But like, <clears throat> but like I but but otherwise he is definitely like similar to you guys um but like um I, I remember what he told me about being a teacher he said my goal as a teacher is just to make good citizens out of these kids you know so i i feel like when you're like saying all the stuff to uh, the kids you, when you're trying to make them like behave a certain way i feel like you have a little bit of a different spin i feel like for you it's like i want if it's almost like you're telling the kids this is you right now this is your potential you can get there, but this is your demon that's in front of you, which is your misbehaving. So if you can get through that demon, you can be this. I don't know if that's like how you approach it, but that's kind of how I interpreted what you described. Yeah, yeah something similar is, um, is that they have, you could, I can clearly see what their, what good qualities they have. I mean, one girl, she was just had her head on the desk all the time. I didn't even talk. Um, but I knew that she was introspective because she would write a lot. And I, I wrote a little note to her. I said, you know what, one day you're going to be able to use your introspection to help a lot of people and to really see, you know, um, you could see a, the sensitive side of what's going on with other people because it's in you. And she read that and she started crying because she was like, nobody, nobody said that to her before, you know? Um, it's like I get choked up just thinking about it. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, um, I don't know where you're going to take whatever it is that I say. And I, and I hope you just use it in any creative way you feel possible. I'm, I'm not there to control what you do with it, but I want you to know that it's there so that you can do it, you know? I think the beauty of how, what you're describing with your SF Blast, NF Play, and FE in general is like, I feel like you help people feel seen, you know? Cause like yeah. maybe especially with the ones with the FI, cause like, you know, they're, they're hiding their, their themselves. And then your FE can see it because, you know, the, the extrovert function can always see the introvert one. So you, you can see it and then you bring it out to light and then they feel like they're seen. They don't feel like isolated anymore. And I think that's, um, and then they feel, they feel great. You know, um, the fact that you, like that girl, you know, the, the, the girl that was introspective. Like, I love that story. Like for me, like I was kind of put, putting myself in her shoes when you were tell, explaining that. I was like, wow, that is powerful. Like if, if I was like introverted and, and I was like, no one can see me. And then suddenly you see, you say that, I'm like, oh, I feel like a million bucks, you know? And then <laughs> there was this one story, it didn't remind me of this one. <laughs> so there's a little round table and these kids are tested. They're, they're in um, ELD, which is English language development, meaning their parents spoke Spanish or some other language. And so when they get come to school, they say, well, you probably have this deficit in English. So we're gonna put you in English language development. And in order to get out, you gotta go through all these hoops. Um, you got to, you know, test out, you got to, your test scores have got to be good. And then you have to take a written test, right? So I get these kids, I'm like, I coach you, you get, I coach them on getting their test scores up. So now their test scores enable them to take the final test, which is a written test, and then they can get out of that and not do it anymore. And one girl, she's sitting there in front of us, she's quiet, she's kind of a, a 
heavyset girl and she's really painfully shy and quiet and she's sitting there in front of me and all the, I'm going around the table and I'm making kids you know talk about certain things and I get to her and she's just sitting there quiet like I'm like you know we can see you right <laughs> it's like you gotta talk <laughs> she thinks that I'm doing like, like if I don't say anything nobody's gonna see me Nobody's going to know that I'm here and they're just going to go breeze right past me. And I'm just sitting there like, it's your turn. You have to talk. And so then, you know, I guess after a certain point, she felt seen. So the next time I seen her, she had shaved her side of her hair off and she was wearing this funky hairstyle. <laughs> and I was just like, what happened? She just kind of came out of her box yeah. and became a different, a totally different person. It was really weird. But she did get her, when they, all the kids that I worked with got all got, they all got their, uh, their pass. So they all got out of that whole ELD thing. And it was a, you know, a big celebration, it was pretty cool. But to, you know, to see people overcome that kind of self-imposed handicap, it was cool. Yeah, yeah I, th <laughs> I feel like you gave her permission to- To be herself. To self-express, yeah, self-expression. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Uh, I love that. Um, all right, so, uh, Darren, we talk a lot about other people. I want you to talk about know, you. Right? Yeah, you. So let's 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 quit the DE stuff now. It's uh, okay. time, time, right. to go, time to go DI. All right. Uh, I want to ask you about purpose. Okay. So uh, life purpose, meaning um, that's NF play also. This is your first one, and we're gonna go to your ST um, sleep uh, after afterwards. So um, in Jordan Peterson's book, um, he uh, Twelve Rules for Life. He said that. Um, he, it's like the best NF play description I've read. I'm like, this, this guy's just describing his functions, his animals. He's like, <clears throat> he's like, purpose doesn't, purpose is not something you develop inside. It's something that comes to you. So he's describing it that it comes from like an external source. So, um, so that, you know, because you have NF play, you get purpose from, from collaborations for, with others mm -hmm. um, or working with others or being with other people or connecting with others. Right. Um, which is actually not true for other types. So if you are like an INTJ, you know, you have NF sleep. So you do get purpose from within. It is not from external, it is from inside. Yeah. So, um, but but for your specific type, you do get the purpose from the, the tribe, the group. Um, tell me how, what kind of purpose the tribe has given you personally and what that means to you. Like that, what sense of purpose have you gotten from the tribe that, that like really resonated with your TI? And be like, you know what? I'm gonna run with this. This is the. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, let me think about that for a sec. I think my observation of other people has allowed me to see. Okay, if they can do that, then maybe that that potential is lies within me, and then I can do it as well. Um, and some of that was actually hard, hard lesson learned because. You know, it's focused outwardly on other people, and and it's easy to take care of other people in order to do other things for other people to make it happen. They're like, oh, that's fun, you know. And then I, when I go home and I have to sit alone by myself or do my own thing, you know, suddenly the energy just runs out, you know. And I'm like, no, you know, you got to give yourself permission. If you let this person have permission to not or to do certain things or to not do certain things, then you have to give yourself that same permission, you know, to take care of yourself, to do things for yourself. Um, otherwise, it's, it's not even fair to you, and it's not fair to them either. Um, so it kind of gave me permission to like, I mean, like just noticing what other people are doing gave me permission to, to say I can do that for myself. You know, take um, to have certain things for myself or to not to refrain from doing certain things. Does that does that make any sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, you're you're kind of like mirroring. It's it's almost like mirroring, like it's like brainwashing, like not brainwashing, but the best. I don't know how to describe it. It's like you 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 brought someone up, so you're hoping that you could also bring yourself up. Um, yeah, yeah, I suppose. But it's a little bit different because it's not emotional. It's TI. So the way you bring yourself up is from your SITI. <laughs> Uh, TISI. Uh, yeah, like a lot of over the years, I've like realized I'm like all the functions kind of interrelate and they yeah. pull on each other to bring a certain balance. Well, well, it's, At least it's that's how I, I perceived it. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's, it's a little bit. 
But let's let's go with your TISI. Um, so that's the sleep, right? It's, it's ST sleep. Yeah, your sleep loss. So this is gonna be your biggest problem in your life, especially because you have feminine SI too. Um, so I interviewed someone with um, masculine, um, not masculine. Sorry. Yep, masculine SI. But um, the person is. Sleep, uh, ST sleep savior as an ENTP and uh, before the interview you told me on Facebook that one of your biggest problem is sticking with an exercise routine mm -hmm. um, so the guy that has the sleep savior he said that as an ENTP um, ST sleep means having a body that works um, and uh, a body that works so it, it means like having an SI routine to um, to, to exercise essentially that works for you and it makes perfect logical sense for you. So it's customized specifically for you that you created for yourself. So it's not, yeah, you could take some ideas from other people, of course, but eventually you piece it together and you hone in this, like, you know, this very concise regiment, regimented um, ex exercise program is one, one example, but obviously it's a lot of it's health, health right? So for yourself that works and you stick to it and you don't break it no matter what. Um, so can you talk about your challenge? So it, it, it and eventually the, the end goal is ha having a body that works. Like, you know, like you can still run, you can still jump, you know, you can like have, have a good life, you know, like you, you're still functional, right? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, as, as you get older. So talk about like your problems being sleep class and not, and the some of the issues you've had by like, struggling not having a, a set exercise routine you know well let's see um i think it's you know, like getting getting proper rest and stuff like that because i was staying up late when i was younger I'm, when i was much younger you know you stay up late uh, or you burn the candle at both ends right so um yeah if you're not if you your body starts to, your body will immediately start breaking down when you're not treating it right uh, I don't like, I'm not crazy about running to the doctor every time I have an ache or pain. Sometimes I'll just endure the pain and think hope it'll go away, you know, but then, uh, you know, like, so regular doctor visits or dentists and all that stuff, it's always been a challenge. Um, but now, you know, as, look, I mean, the vultures are circling, like we said before, right? So <laughs> as you get older, you start actually feeling the physical, um, you start, your body starts, you know, telling you, hey, you're not young, as much young as you were when you're, you know, so your body doesn't bounce back as quickly. So now you, you just like, you got to start taking care of yourself. So, and I would kind of like do all my gather, you know, I'm going to gather all these exercise videos, or I'm going to look at all the diet plans out there. I'm going to, and I'm like, okay, what, what can I reasonably put into it? So maybe I'm having, I'm going to decrease my eating window. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to eat between this time and this time. So that way, you know, I'm going to give my body a chance to repair itself. So, you know, I had a strict eating cycle. So I eat, you know, certain foods, low carb foods between these hours and this hour, you know, so that way um, I'm giving my body a chance to do the work of cleansing itself or to repairing itself. Uh, I'm going to eat certain foods and I'm going to block out. I'm not going to eat these carbs over here because I know that if I do, you know, uh, it's the effect of what all the sugar or all the other things are going to do to me. So I started limiting them. I just start, that's just part of my, my thing now. It's like eliminate those things because in the past, my body could rebound from it, but now it's not, it's not so easy, you know? So stuff like that, uh, what else? I think it's like a, like a lot of ST is like, um, I don't know, like, uh, I guess doing all the, like your, your finances and things like that too, right? We'll, 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 get, we'll get to that later. We're talking we haven't about gotten to that part. We're just talking about the body. All right. Well, you're talking about the body for now. So. Yeah. I don't know. I just have to be, I have to be more mindful of it now than I ever before. Um, but I've always been a slightly obsessed with eating right, eating health food, um, doing some kind of exercise, it, but it's never been strict where I do it on a regiment. And that was the thing. It's like, I never honed it down to one thing. It's just like, let me try acrobatics today. Now I'm going to do you know, with weightlifting, and now I'm going to do something else. So I kind of, you know, I've consumed or into consumed uh, all my different things, and I, I, you know, it's never been narrowed and set in stone. Wait, so I have a, a few, I have a few comments. So first, uh, you said you talk about the vulture circling around you. Uh, I started laughing inside when you said that. It's like a more like an FI thing. So um, I. It was, you. <laughs> was that? 
I got that from you. Wait, how, what do you mean? You mentioned it in, a, I think in another video, you, were, you joked to somebody, you said the, the wolves, they're coming after you. I think you told that to a guy once before. Yeah, yeah, I was in, uh, I was in Ecuador. I went on a, a, a tour, like an adventure tour, and we went hiking. And there was like an old guy, I think he was an INFJ. And then like, we, there, like it, it was a hard hike and then we were tired, right? And then right. I saw, we, we both saw vultures. Right. And, then, yeah, and then I looked at them like, they're, they're waiting for you. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I, I thought about that. And I thought, I, when I looked at you, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. He was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he started laughing. He's, he's laughing when he heard that. <laughs> I, I thought about that and that's why I said it. Because I'm like, that's right. They can be told to die. Yeah, yeah, the vultures. <laughs> <laughs> dark, the dark humor <laughs> comes out. And, uh, I, I love dark humor. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I think I think double the sliders can. They, they think it's funny. It's it's, right. it's yeah, but like <laughs> yeah, but um. So um, I, I like how you I ask you about an exercise question and you turn it to nutrition and sleep. <laughs> so, no, right. So uh, let uh, so I'm, I'm gonna go bring it back to the exercise. So yes, uh, I I like how you, uh, the, how you described the 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 regiment for your nutrition was perfect. It's it's good. Um. Uh, mainly because life forced you into it so you kind of got back in the corner for that so right. that's one way to go about it i guess to get back in the corner and and the sleep also thing um i can relate with, with you about sleeping late because like i'm fellow sleep boss and sleeping late is kind of like the norm um you know the, with the exercise i think you know you see the video and you click on it because you're like okay you may and then maybe sometimes i like i bought several books or um exercise you know things and then i do it for a while and then i'm like this is boring and then I stop, <laughs> you know, or I get dis distracted because I have some other thing going on. And then I had to go back to it again. And then, you know, so it's just kind of like this up and down cycle. I know I'll never perfect it. So, but as long as it's constantly on my mind, I will do something. Sometimes it's just like, you know what? You didn't do exercise today, but take a 30 minute walk. At least do that. At least do something, you know, that kind of thing. I feel like with exercise, like since I'm like, Let's see. Yeah, this year will be my 10th year working in the fitness industry. And right. uh, what I can honestly say about fitness is um, we, we have a saying in fitness. I used to work in um, a commercial gym and um, it takes 30 days to build a new habit, but it takes one year to build a lifestyle. So it, in, in, in a way, like if you want to, if you want work, work out to stick, you have to like, the people that I've seen succeed, they kind of gave up everything. Like they stopped focusing on other stuff and they just focus, right. even EJs who can't do test anything for themselves. Yeah. Um, Cause like, I, 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 like I've gotten an opportunity to empower some EJs before. And it's the, the most amazing feeling. Cause like they don't take care of themselves. Right. So it's like the first time. My, what's that? EJs don't take care of themselves. Um, they do. And they don't like, it's hard for them to do something for themselves. Right. It's easier for them to kill themselves for other people. Oh yeah. Okay. And, and, and like, I, I did have one client who was, I think he was an ESFJ and he had trouble like doing things for himself. Mm -hmm. He said he felt a lot of shame and like he, that he, that he was incapable, you know, oh. TI, right? TI, SI, like yeah. incapable. So um, I like, and, and then after um, a year and a half of training with me, I got him a six pack and, and now he felt like so good with himself and, and clearly he had SI cause he likes to do the same routine. He doesn't like to deviate from the workout routine. Right. Um, so even to, even like a while back, he messaged me, like, I haven't seen him in like five years. And he's like, yeah, I'm still doing the routine that you taught me. And, you know, he's still fit. Right. Um, so like, for me, that feels really good. Kind of like how you feel good when you empower someone. Right. Um, but well, what I know he was an IJ and he would, you know, he was so consistent that yeah, I, I just kind of latch onto that and, and, and because I would be consistent because he was consistent. And so it was like that, but it's yeah. hard to find those type of friends that are on the same schedule as you. And, you know, cause they, they can do it. <laughs> Yeah, but it depends what kind of IJ also. If they ICJ. Have, <laughs> yeah, the ICJ, they, they, they have, they're the best at like, I have a coworker who's an ICJ and he's like amazing at keeping the workout routine. He'll even wake up at like an ungodly hour to go for a run. You know, right. it, 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 like he never breaks the routine, which is great, right? Like he looks, he, he's like super fit all year round, right? Um, but that's not sustainable for most people. So like for me, like the way I see it is like, um, you have to hit the, you need to hit the minimum. Okay. And you, you don't need to do a good job. You just need to do it. Cause I feel like a lot of people psych themselves out. They, they see it like, like what's on their plate of what they need to do for exercise. And they're like, ah, I don't want to do it. You know, it's like, there's, there's, it's like, there's too much. Right. right. So, um, 
like from from a personal trainer standpoint like there is certain movements that you need to hit like you need to do a push and a pull like forward and back and then up and down right so like a shoulder uh up, up like a lat pull or a pull up a chest workout in in, in a in a back right push right. pull up down and for your legs the same thing something that goes up and down what's an up and down exercise that's a squat right what right. goes what goes back and forth well that's like a, a hip hinge like a hip thrust or kettlebell swings or deadlifts right so you can choose and if you're someone that doesn't work out regularly, guess what? For one year, you pick the easiest for all of them and you just do it for one year, like the easiest. It's so easy. And the first week or two, you'll be like, oh my God, this is so pathetic. This is so easy. But if you're someone that does not work out, like you have not stuck to a, a workout routine, guess yeah. what? In two months, you will thank yourself for this. You're like, you know what? I'm glad this is easy because at least I'll, I'll do it because I'm not going to do it if it's like a big plate in front of me. Right, right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I I think I've even begun to implement that. Like yeah. I'll give myself credit if I do 10 push-ups and 10 sit-ups, you know, or something like that. Um, but I think you're right. I mean, I think you're right. If, it's, if you can do it consistently, even a small amount, you eventually you'll just start building up and, and do it for, because it'll become part of your habit. Right. But, it's a full weight drug. But, but, <laughs> but you can't just pat yourself on the back because you did one exercise. You have no. to you have to complete the set. So I had an ISTP coach before that I used to work with and he was the best. He created the best like NITI like system for working out. And I follow it to this day. It's like perfected. You know, it's like make sure that you're doing all the specific movements because these are all the basic human movements. And if you cover all these movements, you will have longevity. And Look me you, up. Tell me, that. do you have that schedule somewhere? Send it to me. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll send you on Facebook. I'll send you what it is. That'd be awesome. Yeah, <clears throat> but... um. So like when I train clients, I give them this program, like, like it's, but the, the program has a lot of options too, right? Like for uh -huh. example, if you're doing a hip hinge, well, you can pick your favorite hip hinge movement or chest, okay. or like let's say you're doing a push, but you get to, you get to pick what chest, what push you want to do. You can do a chest press, a push up, a bench press, you know, you can choose, right? There's an there's option, but you pick the one that works for you or what you like. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the beauty of it. It's like, you can choose, but you have to do it. Right. <clears throat> so, um, and I think I do think for one year you do have to force yourself. Like it, there's there's no way around it. It's willpower, uh, it, you know. Like you, you know, like Jocko Willing, discipline equals freedom. You know, yeah, for yeah. for us, you know, with S on the bottom, routine equals freedom. You yeah. cannot break this routine no matter what. Like you have to, it, you have to force yourself. You're sick, doesn't matter. You got like have, have you read that book by um um David Goggins? Like uh, can't hurt me. Um, he's he's an I've ESC. I've only looked at the episodes of it, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm reading that book right now. It's the most amazing book. Like, like I haven't finished it yet, but I can honestly. Are you the audio or are you are you reading it? I'm reading a book. Okay. Because because I, I I do both. I do audio or book. I, I usually I I look at the book and I, I look at the audio and I'm like, okay, which one should I do? Yeah. I, I listen to David Goggins and I'm like, I can't stand to listen to him, but I'll go read his book, and I'm like, oh, his book is, it's like it's poetry. It's amazing. It is a work of art. Like a, Even though like, I'm visual, I, I take books like that. And I do when I if I do a walk or something like that, I take yeah. it with me, and it's just a chance for my brain to just kind of like go off into. Well, you know. anyways, as a fellow EP, his book will get you fired up. It, it's okay. it's it's so good. Like 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 um I I, I before I did an eleven hour hike uh, a while back, I read that book first because I knew I needed something to tap into, uh -huh. and then. Uh, I remember my feet was like absolutely destroyed, like near the end of the hike. It was such a brutal hike, like on the way back, the way down. You felt good about it. <laughs> but then I, I, I just kept looking back at the book. I'm like, you know what? David Goggins had pneumonia and he was still like carrying a boat on his head. And like, I, I'm, I'm like, I don't have pneumonia. I'm just, I'm just physically destroyed. So I'm, I can keep going, you know, like, you know, like or I, sometimes I don't feel like working out. And I'm like, you know, David Goggins said that he, he, he sometimes he'll look at his shoelace for one hour because he doesn't want to go for a run. He's just sitting there looking at his shoelace, sitting there looking at his shoes. He doesn't want to tie his shoelace, you know, but he'll still do it. He'll just look at his shoelace for like an hour. He'll, you know, like it's- That's a toughie, you know, or like when you're like, like, like there's some days where you get up and you're like, you know what, let's do it. And everything that day goes well. And then all of a sudden one day you get up and you like, I can't even get out of bed. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I overdid it. <laughs> no, it's like, I give myself credit if I can wiggle my foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah well i mean it's work it, it's 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 like i mean like i said the book is so good because like the way he described it is like having a callous mind right so yeah. eventually you get used to the abuse the physical abuse or the mental the <laughs> emotional abuse 
that you're you get become numb to it and you actually crave it right like you want more 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 like you're an, you're an ep right so you you crave like stimulation um right, right. gathering so in, in in his book essentially he's gathering pain like when he when he was going through the the navy seal training and um they, they like he went through hell week three times right um that's part of his like history it's like he's crazy he he, he did hell week three times in the navy seal which is the crazy like one week of no sleep and like just brutal physical torture and eventually like they got he got to the point where like the the, the instructors told him to stop ex- like stop doing the exercise because he was getting too much pleasure from pain they're like just stop goggins just stop like you're you know that is such a rare thing i mean like who there are not many people like that that can get themselves into that state of mind where like, this is what I'm going to do. And then just go all in on it like that, you know? Well, I mean, it's, it's pain tolerance and no one has more pain tolerance than he does. And, and and not just physical pain, it's physical pain and emotional pain because he's, he got like emotionally abused as like, as a young person. Like if someone had a bad life, he did. Like you read this book. I'm like, my life is like, when I read, while I'm reading it, I'm always thinking my life is good compared to his, you know, I, 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 I not, my life has not been good. I've also experienced a lot of, you know, I wonder if it takes like some extreme thing to, you know, like that kind of thing to push you to, you know, like a lot of people become great in a certain area because they've had, you know, all of this stuff to fight against. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't get it, then it's like the resistance is not there, the whatever is not there, the drive is not there to push you like over the top and into that stratosphere of being like, you know, the goat of all time, you know, the best. Yeah, it's well, I mean, it's like a pinball, right? Like the yeah. more pain you get, the more you pull back and then you can. I mean, it's not always true. Like Bill Gates had a good life and he's he's rich. So it's like he, you know, he had a good upbringing. So it's not always the case. Or with parents that were still there. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, the, the way I see it is you can either have like a horrible like upbringing and you use that as fuel to, to catapult uh-huh. yourself, or you had really good parents that like just. That did really everything. train you and stick to you and. Yeah, did everything yeah. right. Did everything. Like yeah, Kobe Bryant. Right. Kobe Bryant is like one of the greatest basketball player ever. I don't know if you um, right. listened to the interview or read his book, The Mamba Mentality. But like, he 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 said that like um, he, he had a good parents. You know, he didn't have a bad upbringing. He's he's he he said that his dad gave him permission to fail. Like w- w- his dad told him in like he I remember his first basketball camp he sucked, and then his his dad said, you know what? No matter what, I still love you. You know, and and that gave him permission to like fail. But of course, he wanted to strive to be better. But he said yeah. that. Knowing that no matter what happens, someone loves him. It's he, right. he he never he was never afraid to fail because you know no matter what he, it's fine, right? So unconditional love was there. So um, uh, that, yeah, I, I don't know if you read that book. I think it's one thing where where parents like you know um, allow, and then some parents promote. Like they're like, okay, I see you're good at this. I'm going to put you in basketball camp. You know, whatever it is. To you know, they see something in their kid, and they they make it so that the kid, you know, other kids. You know, some parents are like, I love you, but they're hands off. You know, you have to make the decision. You have to figure right. it out, that kind of thing. And then so where that person takes that, you know, it depends on how they, you know, how they responded to that, whatever was done with them when they were a kid. It, it's hard because I think every kid is different. So you have to kind of customize. Right. Yeah. You you customize. I don't know. It's so hard to figure out. <laughs> People are complicated. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back to you again. SD Sleep, um, you said that uh, financially you're okay. So that part you've kind of taken care of. Like, it's not like the worst. Okay, no, I'm like, like you know, rich or anything like that. Or, you know, I don't have any debt. That's, that to me is like, hey, I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I have a good credit score. I'm, you know, I can pay my bills on time. I, you have, do you have a house? Huh? You have a house doing everything? I do, yeah. Okay. I yeah. Could, right now it's rented out because I rented it out to some people, um, but yeah, you know, I pay my bills on time. That kind of thing. I've never really had a big issue with my. I think went back. Um, I started a business um, working with somebody doing paint, touch up on cars. We were painting cars and stuff, and it kind of went south because as I in the during I got all this equipment and then they all ditched me and I and I lost all my clients or whatever and I had to start over. So I had to go to career counseling, you know. Uh, and they kind of showed me how to use my finances to make sure that I don't, you know, run up a credit card debt and all that stuff. And it made total sense to me. And I was like, from then on, I never really ever fell into like 
deep credit card debt or anything like that. But even when I do get debt, I hate it because I'm kind of weird in tea about money. So um, yeah, I don't like debt. So I try to pay it off as quickly as possible. And then I try to maximize what I do have. But um, I don't know. I mean, I mean my, I, yeah, I think my ability to make money is a different issue. <laughs> well, I, I find something very interesting about ENTPs that are sleep last. There is a huge difference when the ENTP sleep last versus when they have ST in the first three. Right. And, yeah. and even with ISFJs, ISFJs were ST last are very similar to ENTPs who are ST last. Like it, mm-hmm. there's, um, so my, my biggest thing that I've noticed with ENTPs is that ENTPs are really weird with money. They're like super weird with it. They're like, they become like so cheap. They get so cheap at times. And it's, it's almost like off-putting. No offense to other ENTPs who are like a cheapo. Uh, <clears throat> but, um, but I noticed that the ST last, they're not, they're not as cheap. They're like, the FE is more important than the SD, so they're like they're, they're a little bit more liberal with with their spending. So they're not to the point where they alienate people with their like weirdness with with money. Where yeah. it's it's like yeah, it's it's fine. You know that that relationship is more important, which I feel like it's. But the the, the but the problem with the SD last, it's not like the the weirdness with money. It's more like the health issues um, that that they that they encounter. So I I find it very interesting that 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 sleep last ENTP is very different from the other ENTPs, just from that one point, the point of like, um, you know, like the relationship's more important than the money, but the health becomes a huge problem then. You know, it's, it's, it's like a weird. Yeah, I can't say I've had a whole lot of health problems. There are some things that I, you know, I keep, you can always improve on. Yeah. Um, I try to use my other things to balance it out. So here's what, like an SD, like instead of having a body that works, right? Or having a, um, actually, I, I kind of employ like my um, FE uh, and things like that in the play to actually pull me out of it. I mean, to actually help me with my SI. Like, for example, you know, um, keeping things orderly and keeping all my stuff in order. Even my SI is like, okay, it's dead last and single activated. But I'm also, my FE uh, and my things like that will help me to like, okay, you know what? People are coming over and I don't want to look like a slob. So <laughs> I'm going to clean everything up, you know, and I might as well organize it while I'm doing that, you know, organize things, keep it clean. So that when they get here, they, I won't look like, a, you know, it won't be unpleasant for them and it won't be unpleasant for me. Right. So I leverage, you know, my other, uh, I guess, things so I can take care of the ones that are harder for me. Yeah, that, that, well, that, that sounds like a good strategy. So keep, keep yeah. it up. Uh, the, the, the one thing that um, was fascinating to me when you said what you said earlier is when you said that you went to a career counselor and, did. They, and they gave you some advice with credit cards and stuff and, and then like uh, how to manage your finance. Um, I think this is also the other thing that's um, different about the ST last ENTPs is like, it's almost like you have TE almost like you're willing to listen to TE advice because like I find that those with ST in the first three, they're like, nope, the way I do things is very personal. So you're, you're not going to tell me how I do things. But like when you have it last, it's kind of, it's almost like, it's yeah it's okay for you to give me something you need it and i like i'll listen to those financial guys on you know on youtube and stuff like what is that guy's name he he does. yes okay so guys like him i'll, I'll listen to it because i'm like i need all the help i can get if they, yeah. if they have a strategy for getting your finances in order and putting things in a certain way and it's going to you know you're going to pay off your mortgage and you're going to be able to retire on time and you're going to have this for your health and stuff I'm going to listen to that advice. I may not do every single thing they say, but I just, it feels good. It almost feels good just to listen to. It feels like I'm doing something when I'm not. Um, (laughs) It feels like I'm building it up because I'm more focused on, you know, the NF, SF part of things. um, And I want the other part to be taken care of in the background so that I can stand on it and run around, you know, and do my other, my freedom. Cause that's not where my, I don't live, the, I don't really want to live in that ST area. So, but I do need to stand on it to do all my other things. Right. So I'll gather enough to stand on it, at least, you know, the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the foundation. Right. Uh, okay, um, so uh, Darren, my last question for you uh, before we wrap the interview is, 
your sexual modalities. You are tester and visual. Um, and you know, tester is like smell and like experimenting with different scents or or food or taste. Mm-hmm. Um, and then visual is a given. So how do you personally experience those two? I always say with, with uh, the taste and smell, like I'm just kind of open to like different cuisines, different things. I like you, I like to travel. So I've been to a lot of different places. Um, there's still a lot of places I want to go. But when I get there, I'm not, I don't turn away from the food or, you know, or any of the sights or smells and things like that. That's all super exciting to me. Um, I go into a restaurant, I'll try out different dishes that I haven't tried before. I don't mind that kind of thing. Um, I experiment with my food all the time. I mean, like I'll do, be doing a recipe or something, trying to cook something. And if I don't have the ingredient, I don't mind substituting it with something else. You know, I was like, eh, you know, let's, let's try this. It might work, you know. Um, and sometimes it turns out really good. I just can't remember it later on because <laughs> I don't know what I did. <laughs> Feminine SI. <laughs> yeah, I forget. But, you know, it worked out at the time. So that's never been a big issue. Um, I don't remember smell that well. So I, I yeah, I smell. I mean, I can tell when something smells bad or rancid or something. But like, like say it's a particular cologne or something like that. I, I don't I don't focus on it. I'll know it, it'll it'll bring us something to mind, but I don't and I'm not sure about that one as much. Well, I don't think it's memory with smell. I think it's just like wanting to experiment yeah. with. I don't run away from certain smells unless they're really you know it's got to be pretty funky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what about the visual? Yeah, visual is like constant. Um, I've always been super visual. I mean, you can see in my background, I've got a million little knickknacks that have collected over the period of time. So I got my bachelor's degree in fine arts. I was going to go for psychology, but I ended up, you know, uh, doing painting and drawing. I was going to become an art teacher. Um, the financial system went wacko and I didn't get my, um, my teaching credential and for, I mean, for, yeah, for art. So I ended up teaching English, but um, I use all those visuals to help teach. Um, so it's just kind of a constant thing. And then, so I use my SF, it's helping people now to, uh, it's my part side gig is to do uh, image consulting. So I have people like figure out their color, figure out that kind of stuff like that, uh, you know, best silhouette for them, things like that. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, it, it, I, think, I think there needs to be more image consultant. I'm just trying yeah. to integrate all my everything into you know my whole life. Yeah. Trying to in- integrate all the different parts of me uh, so that you know everything is covered. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, thanks, Darren, for uh, sharing more about your life as an ENTP jumper, uh, sleep class. <laughs> You're definitely like a. There's not there's there's not as many ENTP jumpers as standard from what I can tell. So, um, well, INTJs, and I thought there ever was. Sorry, was that? <laughs> I keep seeing like INTJs popping up, you know. Oh, INTJs yeah, they're and INTPs. It's like, wow, they're rampant. I didn't know that there were so many people like that. Yeah, they're overrepresented. Like <laughs> the, the, the I, I mean, in 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 the personality space, the INTJs, INFJs, you know, like yeah, like yeah, ENFPs, they're all overrepresented. <laughs> so ESFPs surprised me. There's so many ESFPs. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, and that they're interested in type at all is is yeah. fascinating because you know. I didn't think that they would be interested in type. I didn't think any ESPs would be interested in type or in psychology or anything like that. So to yeah. see it, it's really encouraging, actually. Yeah, it's, it's. I think the ESFP is like the third most common ty- type that they type. You know, I think ENFP is the most common, followed by really? INTJ. I think INTJ and ENFP is about the same, and then ESFP cool. is like the third. You know, it's like, oh my god, I, that that was like the biggest shocker for me. I was like, so many ESFPs, they're everywhere. I think there's like a lot of INFPs would be showing up. No, there's not a lot of actually. <laughs> so, yeah, they interview that many, huh? Because a lot of them mistype themselves. They're actually like NIFI or something. Like they're like they're directly oh. INTJs. So you know, <laughs> they thought they were INFP and they're not. <laughs> I mean, because they don't fit in the in the in the in the old the old system. In the old system, they are yeah. INFPs, right? Because yeah, right. Yeah. But in the new system, they're like, oh, no, you're not weird with people. You're NIFI, right? You know, OP is a game changer. You know, it really yeah. is a game changer in a lot of ways. Yeah. So what people thought was one thing is not so. I mean, people thought my girlfriend was an INFP, but then when she got officially typed, she was I- NIFI. So it turns out she was an INTJ jumper. You know, she just didn't fit the old system. So you both are jumpers. That's so weird. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both jump. Okay. But uh, yeah, we have a tr traditional INTJ ENFP relationship also. So it's like, yeah. I was like, oh, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> you know. Like, you never know. <laughs> yeah. All right, Darren. Um, take care yeah. of yourself and enjoy the rest of your day. All right, Kendrick. Take care. See you. Great talking to you.